Welcome to a special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight, everyone. In this bonus segment, we are shining a light on some current or up-and-coming games to keep an eye out for. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia, and today my co-host Ryan and I are welcoming Jeffrey Hayes to talk about Haunted Hill Academy, a two-player fate-based game about a mysterious boarding school. Uh, Welcome to Character Creation Spotlight, Jeffrey. It is really great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. Absolutely. Uh, Could you start us off with telling us a bit about yourself and what sort of projects you have going on right now? Yeah, so my name is Jeffrey Hayes. I'm a professional game master uh, based out of San Francisco. That is how I make my living. Somehow, (laughs) I do my best. Nice. That's a cool living, though. There (laughs) are worse ways to make a living. (laughs) Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, I have a background in drama therapy, so I bring that to my game mastering experience. So all of my games are about uh, emotional growth and development. Uh, Cool. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) My business is Critical Growth Games, and uh, the idea from that came from when, like, uh, Critical Role and all these other uh, actual play shows were getting super big. Everyone got, like, the culture got really about critical success and crit fail. And Mm. I was like, can we focus on the critical moments of character growth? Can that be what our games are about? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, please. More of that. (laughs) (laughs) That's what all of my games are about. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So since this is an abridged version of our normal show, we're going to stick to the highlights instead of doing a full like three hours (laughs) about the system. (laughs) Um, So let's go ahead and jump in and find out what this game is all about. What's in a game? Yeah. Could you start off by telling us a bit about the core concept of Haunted Hill Academy? Absolutely. Haunted Hill Academy is basically what if that notorious old haunted mansion in your neighborhood uh, was a boarding school you could go to and you could learn there and find out all about the spooky secrets. Uh, I was very inspired by works like Betrayal at the House on the Hill and Cabin in the Woods, uh, where they have all of these different supernatural things uh, coexisting at once, just one like door away just always behind one closed door that you could open and unleash a Pandora's box of all sorts of stuff to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, man, I wish I could have gone to high school in a place like that. (laughs) (laughs) Be Way more interesting than where I went. (laughs) (laughs) So are you playing as like students at this boarding school or teachers or okay everyone plays as students uh it's kind of like if you took masks and like the focus on identity and label shifting and masks uh and mash that with bluebeard's bride where you're constantly searching through a big old haunted mansion Mm. uh, oh cool that is the game basically very cool (laughs) oh that's very cool so can you tell us a little bit more about like the setting and what characters are specifically doing. Um, is there like a specific like time frame that you're playing in or can you kind of set this mansion wherever you want? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the assumption going into the game is that it's more or less modern day, uh, mm-hmm. East Coast, United States. Uh, but again, it is meant to be the ubiquitous mansion. So if you want it to be uh, in the future, one of my favorite games of this, we played it, uh, this Haunted Hill Academy was on a space station. Oh, Uh, Oh, cool. It had been like excavated from the ground it was on and lifted into a space station. Uh, (laughs) So that was super fun. Uh, The idea of kind of the history of the place is it's been around as long as there have been photographs to prove that it's been around and no one is sure quite when it's built. So you can go back as far as you want. You can set it in any time frame you want. Um, but as far as gameplay is concerned, characters are in kind of a sandbox environment. Mm. Like this is your school to run a muck in. If you want to, you know, ditch class every day to try and figure out how to become an evil wizard, you can do that. Uh, <laughs> if you want to become valedictorian, if you want to take a ghost to prom, you can do any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> so it is your like slice of life, supernatural horror, and I'm not here to stop you. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> y- y- you talked about the future and it it instantly made my brain go to what if starfleet academy 
Hmm. But haunted. But haunted. <laughs> haunted Starfleet Academy. Here for it. Love it. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so what sort of materials do we need to play a game of uh, haunted uh, Hill Academy? So we need fate dice. Those are those six sided dice with two blanks, two minuses, and two pluses. Mm -hmm. We need uh, something to write notes with. If we were playing in person, we could use index cards. Uh, but I don't know if anyone will ever play in person again. So we have Google Docs. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, you would need a writing implement in person. And honestly, that's about it. Oh, pretty easy. Yeah. Um, so what kind of characters can you make in this game? What are our choices? <laughs> uh, that's a great question. How do I even answer that? You create a student, uh, mm -hmm. like a normal teenage person, um, for certain values of normal, like, <laughs> again, the base assumption of the game is that you are an average student coming to the school trying to unearth mysteries. But if you want to jump ahead and create a character who is already magical in some way or supernatural in some way, that is an option available to you. You can play as like, you know, a burnt out stoner type. You can play as like a... Uh, you know, jock star MVP, or you can play as like a vampire who wants desperately to feel human again. Mm. You have options. All That's right. amazing. <laughs> I think, I think we have enough uh, to, to walk through creating some characters. Can you walk us through uh, creating some characters together right now? Let's make some people. Absolutely. I would love to. There's just one step I would like to do first, which is oh, yeah. uh, if we could look at the draft together uh, and scroll down to the Academy history where it says rumors. If we could each either choose or come up with one rumor about the Academy, uh, I think that'll inform a lot about the kind of people we'll be playing uh, based mm. on what rumor drew them to this school, maybe. All right, so we're looking to to figure out some rumors uh, about this Academy. Um, looks like you've got quite a few examples in there um mm -hmm. but i'm assuming that we can make up our own stuff as well oh uh, absolutely kind of. please feel free oh wonderful all right so let's see um just some examples I i'm seeing uh, in order to graduate you must leave a piece of your soul in an object somewhere in the building it's possible to commune with artifacts to learn more about previous students uh the supernatural rumors are a smokescreen for a drug smuggling operation based out of the Forbidden Wing. Uh, these are amazing. Thank you. I tried to draw inspiration from everywhere that felt even remotely spooky. So we had to get the Scooby-Doo reference in there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's definitely um, a wide array of potential rumors. And if we're each coming up with one, um, this is going to be a wild school. Okay. Yeah, that's the wonderful thing is like because they're rumors, we don't have to worry about defining anything about the world in stone. This is just yeah. stuff we've heard. I'm going to say that the library mm -hmm. is actually a weird point in space time where it connects to all other libraries everywhere. Yes. So it is technically the biggest library in the world. Nice. The second you said the library, my soul lit up, and then it just got better from there. <laughs> <laughs> I love libraries. <laughs> Let's see. And Ryan, I didn't even say anything evil. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to say um, there is a crystal hidden in the Forbidden Wing that is said to transform you into your true self. Ooh, I really like that. I knew it was coming. I, knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how is uh, this going to be about love or magical girls? It's something like that, right? Um, <laughs> a little more ambiguous, but still. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you got one you want to throw at us, Jeffrey? Yeah, I'm going to go with one that I've already written here. Uh, the school's founder, Alestra Welcott, uh, filled her house with hidden traps and torture chambers to punish anyone snooping around to try and find the vault where she kept her, her vast fortune. <laughs> Ooh. And it's rumored that it's still in the house somewhere. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Secret treasure, too. We love a treasure hunt. Always a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> cool. So if we scroll back up to character creation on here, uh, we are playing a fate-based game, which means we have aspects. We have short, descriptive phrases about our characters. 
Uh, and we have four different prompts for aspects in this game. We have our core belief. Uh, that is like your guiding light, your moral compass. It is the thing that defines how you approach the world. This can change during the course of the game, but if it does, that's like a world changing shift. It's a big deal. Uh, we have why Haunted Hill Academy. So like the reason you've come to study at this school, uh, okay. it's a prestigious institution. So there's a good reason there, but it's also the spookiest place on earth. So it, it's really about <laughs> what's drawing you here. Uh, your greatest desire, that can be anything between like a goal and a wish. It can be very short term or very long term. Um, some of my favorite examples of this have been, I want to make the world a little better every day. I want to usurp Satan himself. And I just want to take Stacey Kevinson to prom. <laughs> <laughs> all or of all of those. All yeah, of those. All, all <laughs> <laughs> I want to usurp Satan and take Stacey Kevinson to prom while making the world a better place. <laughs> well, I think that's the only way that she would agree to go to prom with you. That makes if sense. You, you usurp Satan. But it's kind of her She's deal. She's like, uh, you have to prove it to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody that really wants to go to the, the thing with me is going to have to usurp Satan. I'm just sorry. <laughs> you do that. That's the ultimate promposal right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, and then finally, we have our plaguing question. So this is your opportunity to really telegraph to your guide, the person running the game, what kind of supernatural horror you want your character to experience. Mm. Um, some of my favorites in the past have been, how did my parents really die? What if I wake up one day and everyone else is gone? Uh, why doesn't my reflection ever look right? What happens when I black out? Uh, and am I the bad guy? <laughs> that's really cool all right so uh it sounds like we're making aspects right now yeah uh, let's start off with aspects that sounds fun so right. starting with core belief core belief all knowledge is good knowledge Ooh, that's nice. very good try not to think of magical girl centric ones but i think i'm just gonna have to lean into I it i think you're gonna have to lean into it i think, Ryan. Just I think we decided it. that we gave up on trying to do i know Anything that isn't that. That's what it sounded like as a listener to the show. <laughs> I mean, I want you to know that I'm certainly not trying to be anything other than myself right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Core belief. Uh, love is the greatest educator for justice. Awesome. That that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to create a character with us, Jeffrey? I would love to. Um, my character's core belief is going to be everything has a price. All right. That is going to take us to uh, Why Haunted Hill Academy. Yeah. I know I'm stuck on this one. <laughs> yeah. Why on earth would you want to go to such a cool school? <sighs> so I'm also not fighting against type today. And my type <laughs> is always to create a super secret spy. So perfect. Love it. Uh, <laughs> my reason for coming to Haunted Hill Academy is I'm actually being hired by an organization to be here. And so my mm. aspect is this is the mission. OK, oh, that's very nice. <laughs> OK, I OK, I think something's formulating a bit here. Um, my my reasoning is because uh, the school has the fastest Internet. Uh, connection <laughs> out of all the out of all the available universities um and my aspect is i'm in i love it i love that that's very good <laughs> this place spooky as what great internet well i mean if you got multi-dimensional portals to every library in the entire world that's true. like there's got to be some pretty fast internet to that's true there. and everybody knows that computers are actually powered by ghosts anyway exactly this is true so that's why they don't work most of the time. But I'm just picturing like this big old Victorian clapboard house, like parts of it falling off. And it's like, you know, they have the fastest Internet. I know. Right. <laughs> it's like completely falling apart. But somewhere in the basement, there's just like a server room. That's, like. that's where all the money went, right? <laughs> right. It's true. Uh, and, and that's why they got rid of modems, because modems were allowed you to hear the voices of the ghosts as it was connecting to the Internet. That's what modems are. That's why it makes that sound. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the screams of the damned. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and or dial up. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, yeah. You've got mail. 
right. Um, I put, it is the only place left with something to teach me. Ooh. Ooh, that's Ooh, nice. That's very good. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that, I, yeah, that says a lot about the character very quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that a lot. All right. Uh, so that will bring us to greatest desire. And this is always phrased as an I want statement. I feel like I'm taking this very seriously right now. <laughs> the, stakes are, the stakes are so high. <laughs> the stakes are so high. <laughs> that's I, if I can just use this opportunity to mention something. That's one of the things I love that gets captured in the gameplay of this system is the feeling of everything is at 11 out of 10 all the time of like, yes. oh, I got to find out the secret legacy of my grandparents that I'm tied into. That might be a cult for Cthulhu, but I also have to get an A in math, but I also have to get a date to prom, but I also have to get an elite part in the school play. <laughs> yeah (laughs) it's a lot it's a lot to balance it is a lot being a teenager is tough it sure is is. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. okay i'm gonna say i want to know the last unknowable thing death well gosh darn (laughs) (laughs) yeah serious (laughs) that's awesome um and I, I'm apparently leaning into a like uh, a magical girl uh, hacker archetype, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, my greatest desire is I want to prove that I'm the best hacker in the world. Love that. And that's why you went to a haunted school with a good good internet package. With a good internet connection. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love it so much. I love it so much. Magical girl <laughs> hacker at a haunted academy is not an archetype I know I, I knew I needed, but yep. <laughs> but now that we're here, <laughs> now that we're here, it's like just a flavor combination that feels right together. It, it really does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going with uh, for my super secret spy. I want to be a normal kid for once. Ah. Yeah. Everyone else is doing all these great things, and he just wants to maybe go get ice cream. Mm-hmm. You and know? not have to worry about anything. See a movie, maybe get a C in a class. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, and that is going to bring us to our plaguing question. Mm. I know I'm really stuck on this one. Yeah, there are so many different options for how this can go. We can bring in some psychological horror. Body horror comes up a lot with this for people. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll get us started here because I like it when, like personal taste for me, I like it when the plaguing question could have a mundane answer, but is almost safer if it has a supernatural one. Mm -hmm. So I'm picturing this as a character who has been receiving threats in his dorm room every night from someone who knows he's here on a mission Hmm. uh and my plaguing question who who has been sending the threats nice you'd almost prefer it to be a ghost right (laughs) um i went with uh why can i feel the emotions of computers yes (laughs) cyber magical girl there's to the ghosts in them that are computers. <laughs> I, I was thinking either like ghosts or uh, like feeling the emotions of other users uh, th- as they're using their computers. Awesome. I'm going to say, what if knowledge isn't power? <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel the horror of this character. <laughs> Everything about this character has been knowledge based. Yep. How mm-hmm. dare you do this to our sweet baby? <laughs> I am personally affronted. <laughs> As I, I said in our um in our Call of Cthulhu episodes too, I like to take my little person and then I like to hurt them. <laughs> I'm sure that doesn't mean anything about me. Nope. It's probably fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> Cool. So this is going to take us into our identities. So in this game, when you want to add to your role, you don't add a skill set, you add an identity. Uh, These identities that you start with at the beginning of the game are based off of uh, common high school archetypes uh, that we've seen over and over again. And I say archetypes, I mean stereotypes. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is intentional. It's, you know, 
you feel as a teenager, at least I did, like I had to fit into a box to get anything done. Yeah. Uh, and so there's this push pull mechanic throughout the game of these uh, identities going up and down quite a bit. Uh, and throughout the course of the game, you can unlock new identities. So my question to the two of you is, do we want to just play with, uh, for our character creation today, the base identities, or do we want to unlock some other options? Uh, you, you know we want more options. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. So in addition to here on identities, we also have a list, if you scroll down uh, to the section marked unlockables and advancement, uh, there's a subsection of identities under unlockables. So for these, the only requirement that I'm going to have for us is if we have any unlockable identities that we use today, uh, we must have a narrative justification for how we unlocked that. Mm. Uh, there are examples in each one of those of how you might have unlocked it, uh, but you can come up with your own narrative justification. But it's just something that would be helpful to us if we were playing the game to get us into the space of the character. Oh, and of course, wow. because I'm playing with the two of you, I did send you a magical <laughs> girl and necromancer identity. You did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's right Very there. Good. Yeah. Oh. So the I, way I, this I, is going to work is we're going to have six points to spend total. Uh, and you can spend that into your identities. You can have no more than four points in any one identity. Okay. Well, you said we have six points. We spend four points in the identity. Or do you we can do it between a, multiple identities? Yes, we, you take oh. multiple identities, yes. Oh, okay. Six points up Ooh. to four can go into one identity. You could spend all six points in, as one point each in six different identities. <sighs> oh, this makes me super happy. <laughs> so you're not locked into just being a magical girl. You uh -huh. can be a nerdy, uh -huh. jockey, magical girl. Because I saw, I saw Glitch. And mm -hmm. um, that one really sane to me uh, a bit. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. It al almost feels like uh, almost like a Neo uh, type from the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Definitely, maybe. Um, which would be really kind of a cool. I think I might be do. I might be doing two, two, and two uh, for mine uh, between nerd glitch and magical girl because that just sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock that in. Um, awesome. I don't even know exactly what all of them do, but you know what? Uh, it really paints a nice picture uh, for this character. Yeah, definitely. So, because these aren't skill sets, they kind of can do anything that you can convince the guide they should be able to do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have listed under each of them some examples of when you could roll with these identities. Uh, so like, you know, nerd might be used to recall some extremely specific information. Glitch might be used to literally clip through walls. Uh, you have your options available to you, but it's whatever feels right in the moment and feels true to where the character is at. I like that. Most of the unlockable identities have to do with feeling you know, outside of humanity in some way. So whenever mm -hmm. your character feels like they don't fit in with humanity, you're probably going to use one of those identities. Very cool. I, I feel like I'm going to say three for Necromancer and three for Nerd. Awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Just feels correct. Just a little bit of growing to do in each and, and you'll, be, yeah. uh, you'll be top tier, a top shelf Necromancer. And I'm writing, writing all this, but I'll type it into the mm -hmm. character sheet later on. There you go. So that we have it. I'm going to, given my character's proclivities, I'm going to keep him with the standard identities for now. We're going to go four into cadet, uh, mm -hmm. one into rebel, uh, and one into outsider. I like it. Nice. Cool. Hey, guess what? We're done. We created characters. Oh, boy. <laughs> we gotta did it. Probably have to do some naming. We do have to do some naming. There do is other, one naming. other thing that I want to point out on the character sheet here, which yeah. is our academic tracker. 
So in this game, unlike other games, we don't have hit points. We don't have consequences or anything like that. Your character in combat can take as many hits as you think narratively makes sense. Okay. They're not going to black out or anything unless you decide that happens. I also, like that. character death is never something the guide can inflict on the player. Uh, they... It is something that the player can choose for themselves if that's what they want. But the thing that is on par with character death that they have to be aware of is expulsion. So throughout your game, you are going to be, you know, breaking a lot of school rules probably to find the fun things in this this wonderful haunted mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time you break a rule and got caught doing that, your academic tracker is going to slip down a step. If it ever oh. hits F, you have an expulsion hearing and you must make the defense of a lifetime. And if you do not, <laughs> you are expelled from the school and your story at Haunted Hill Academy abruptly ends. Oh, that's Oof. amazing. <laughs> so that's how we kind of build in that weird tension of like, yeah, it's all about the horror, but it's also about the horror of like trying to live a normal life, which I think all of us really understand. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the true horror. Yeah, I'm also remembering, uh, since we are not playing the one-on-one -on -one version of this game, I mean, we're not playing this game at all, but <laughs> let us go into the conceit that we are all playing together for the multiplayer variant, which is the thing. Uh, we're going to scroll on down on the sheet here to customizing your game, the multiplayer variant, uh, and we're going to take these, four, these three individuals uh, and make them into a group with our fifth character aspect, the shared secret. Ooh. So hmm. when we are all ready, and since we have completed everything but our names, uh, the players collaborate together to determine a secret they all share. As a group, we get to pick one of the questions below, uh, or we can come up with our own. So mm -hmm. the questions I have pre-written are, what incredible thing did we see? Oh, I've left out a very key part of the game, and I'm glad we're here. <laughs> Obviously. So this is a big old haunted mansion. It used to be a haunted mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, when the person who, you know, lived in the mansion died, they said it had to be turned into a school, but everything in the school had to stay as is. Uh, so, you know, students have classes in like sewing rooms and greenhouses and kitchens, etc. instead of traditional classrooms, because there weren't mm. many uh, in the house. To kind of acquiesce to this demand a whole third of the school is off limits to students and is called the forbidden wing uh and that is where the spookiest stuff is supposed to happen in the school there are so many rumors like you know uh if you go into the forbidden wing the rooms change around or you might uh go in and never be able to come out because it'll mm -hmm. eat you or there's actually a whole separate mirror school in the forbidden wing so that's just something that i wanted to make crystal clear about it is what the forbidden wing is because i think we mentioned it but didn't actually say what it is mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh so shared secret what incredible thing did we see when we all snuck into the forbidden wing together or what supernatural trait do we all share that we can't t tell anyone else about or what horrible thing did we all take part in together <laughs> Or what school disapproved club are we all part of and why is it so important to each of us interesting do any of these stand out to the two of you or do they spark new ideas in your brains? Hmm. I mean, I feel like we could have a treasure hunter club. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, that that kind of would gel uh, with my character's interests as well. Yeah. I was also curious if there's something to like a hacking club. Mm hmm. Because it feels definitely linked to Ryan's character. I don't know if the knowledge of hacking kind of jives with Amelia's character or not. I, I, I wonder if the treasure hunting might even be better because, um, I think my character wouldn't want to associate with other hackers oh, that uh, makes because sense. Cause they're, they're above them. Yeah. Cool. I do like, like what the can, idea what of the can, treasure hunting for sure. Yeah. yeah. And okay. it's like not super official. It's just like us looking for treasure, but we can register it as a club. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's school disapproved, so oh, that's I don't true. think we've registered. We don't it. even have to register. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is it just the three of us, or do we have a fourth member who is an NPC? I think it's fun to have an NPC. Cool. Yeah. All right. So now I'm now in my head. I'm like, okay, but who is the NPC? 
right? Yeah, I think we want a name and, like, one key identity for this person. I think they're a person that, like, they're... They and their parents did not know that this was a haunted, creepy school or mm-hmm. anything. They're just oh, like that. super freaked out by this whole experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's really they just like good. thought this was like a regular boarding school. Yeah, I love that. That's a that's a great hook for my character who wants to also be normal. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're just transferred here from a different boarding school. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most beige sounding name we can give this person? Edward. (laughs) (laughs) Shout out to all our Edwards out there. Hey, Edwards. (laughs) Hey, Edwards, Uh, what up? I think his name is Edward Edward Whitmore. Yeah, it totally is. (laughs) Shout out to all the Edward Whitmores. Uh, Mm -hmm. Cool. That's amazing. (laughs) Now we just need names for ourselves, right? Uh, not quite. So we know Ooh, that stuff. thing, but we actually have to write in this fifth aspect and each of us has to have a different phrasing of it. So a relationship oh, okay. to our treasure hunter club. Okay. So it's just like a thing about. It's about your club, relationship or? to it. So, okay. um, in the example I gave, uh, the four students involved accidentally summoned a demon uh, mm-hmm. and the four aspects that came out of that are the game, the demon is a game of pretend we took too far. I'll seal the demon away at any cost. I can get unimaginable power if I let the demon run free. Or what if summoning the demon wasn't an accident? So mm-hmm. it's four very different feelings of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. I'm going to say the school has secrets and the treasure is the answer. Nice. All right. Uh, mine's finding this treasure is the ultimate puzzle that I need to crack. Ooh. Uh, I was thinking about my character and how the treasure hunting club is useful for him to maybe complete his mission, even though we haven't even decided what that is yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also just a fun, silly thing that feels like he can be a kid. So, uh, I'm calling this aspect two birds with one stone. Oh, I like it. Very nice. I think it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have also come up with a name for my character, and that is Austin Cog. Nice. I'm going to name my character Hypatia Lowell. Hypatia is very good. Ryan, I thought of a name before you. I know. This happened twice now. <laughs> <laughs> Mark it on your calendars, everyone. <laughs> Trying to think of a, a cool hacker name. Mm. That's that's what I'm uh, hung up on. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Obviously, Austin Cog is the code name. He's Agent 82. <laughs> Why 82? I don't know. It was the first number that came to mind. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I was like, <laughs> really? No, there's no significance. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my my character's name is Elmira Argent, mm. and mm-hmm. uh, and she goes by uh, X X a uh, mixed case, uh, and then the Omega symbol X X. Mm. That's uh, that's her hacker name. I love okay. that. Uh, my last question before we conclude character creation for both of you is: We have these unlockable identities that we haven't necessarily explained how your characters got. Mm. So I would like to hear the narrative justification for how Necromancer and then Glitch and Magical Girl came into these people's lives. (laughs) I would say Necromancer is probably easier to explain. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I feel like you've been at the school for a couple years and like living in the library. Um, And because it's all of the libraries, there's probably some like demon libraries in there too (laughs) um and just i think at this point still just dabbling just you know just small bone constructs at this point we haven't like fully (laughs) raised anything from the dead at this point it's just you know like maybe like a rabbit or a bird or something but not like a full human still Mm -hmm. working my way up very nice. Oh man, I'm like having to push down the GMing muscles in me 
Because I want to be like, <laughs> so who's there the first time and you summon okay. someone? And what's your no. relationship like with that person? <laughs> this show is extremely difficult to make because I, I want to like... <laughs> I have described it as the eternal foreplay of RPGs. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's, it's so much. We just never get there. We just never get there. We just never get there. <laughs> nope. Um, well, my character uh, was uh, kind of uh, hacking her way through um, a popular MMO um, and uh, somehow got pulled into it. And she's not sure why. It was at school. It was late one night uh, by herself in her dorm uh, and uh, got pulled into this thing. And the like the main heroine uh, goddess figure in the game granted her the ability to get out of the game back to reality as long as I took up the charge that was kind of like the the whole impetus of the game itself like you're you're these these characters that are like trying to uh to to save the world from darkness so on and so forth uh by using magical transformation powers so then i came back but instead of just being a magical girl there was some wires crossed and that gave me my glitch powers too that's awesome Trapped in a game is always, like, the best answer. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go wrong. No. <laughs> and you took only, like, mundane ones, right? Like, normal, yep. like, stereotype ones? Yep, I just took the normal ones. Um, just your Joe Average spy. Yeah, just, just, yeah, average, just your average spy. teenage spy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> Just like I that. Yeah, I too am 16 years old, just like the youth of today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've made we characters, it. right? Yeah, we, we did made it. Our characters. Character <sighs> creation is very quick in this game. Um, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we have like so many hooks already just from this. Like you said, you're you're itching to just like pull on all of these strings already. That's really exciting. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I love them. I love yeah, that. I like this a lot, uh, and and I love that you can spread your uh, your characters uh, through multiple different uh, you know descriptors like that. That's uh, those identities are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that you have the option to do more than one. It's not just picking a playbook and mm -hmm. you know trying to fit everything into that. Mix yeah, and, and like your character can drastically change identities over the course of a single session. Like, mm. yeah, you can completely swap who you are and then swap back next session and it's a fun exploration so much like being a teenager much like being a teenager someone <laughs> asked me like so wait so the academic tracker is like the main thing that works against you since you don't have hp and i'm like kind of like that's not the only thing at stake like you are constantly battling to keep your sense of self in this game mm -hmm. yeah but also maybe you're not like right your sense of self, your sense of self is always fluid and changing, and sometimes that's good, and sometimes it's not. And those emotional reactions that come up, that's kind of the thing that's at stake in the game. Have you considered that your worst enemy is actually yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I was the monster all along. Yes. Or was it actually the person I saw in the mirror, or like the demon who was masquerading as my reflection? Mm -hmm. It was actually the ghost that was wearing a human suit. There we go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't a mirror. It was a window. Oh. <laughs> layers upon layers. <laughs> it's so deep. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you want to highlight about the Kickstarter or about this game that we haven't gone over yet? I mean, I feel like there's just so much to the game that I'm proud of. Like, there are so many examples of, like, rooms in the Forbidden Wing and characters that you can get into. Um, the game itself is very simple, but uh, I've put a lot of love into the text of it to make it as evocative as possible, and I'm excited for people to get their hands on it. Yeah, uh, I can definitely tell even <laughs> from what we've done here that it's it's very lovingly crafted, and there's just so much to go on, even from, like, the mm -hmm. couple examples that we looked over. Thank you. So uh, I will say that uh, 
it, we're a year out from the completed PDF because I want to take the time to get the art and the layout and everything. But anyone sure. who backs at the five dollar and up level gets immediate access as soon as the Kickstarter is completed to this plain text version so that you can play immediately and have fun with it. Um, and anyone who backs at uh, the two hundred and fifty dollar level gets to sit down with me and play the game. So. Very nice. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us to talk about this game. Thank you. Um, this was a great time. I had so mm -hmm. much fun. Ah, oh, I love doing you. these. <laughs> 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 Do you want to remind everybody where they can find you, where they can find the Kickstarter, all of that? Absolutely. Uh, so you can find me at Jeffrey Jeff Rar, R A W R, on Twitter. Uh, but that's mostly a place where I post the pictures of the flowers I get myself each week because I'm hashtag worth it. Uh, you can follow <laughs> Haunted Hill Academy on Twitter at Haunted Hill Acad, and there's a pinned tweet that will take you to the Kickstarter link. Um, but you can also just find it on Kickstarter under Haunted Hill Academy. Uh, and you can learn more about my business, www.criticalgrowthgames.com. Very cool. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this uh, special bonus episode of Character Creation Spotlight. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to check out the Haunted Hill Academy Kickstarter, which is going on right now as of the release of this episode. We will see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like All My Fantasy Children. Each week, Aaron Katana Saez and Jeff Stormer take a listener-submitted prompt and, using some of their favorite tabletop RPGs, create an original fantasy character. Along the way, they share laughs, stories, verbal hugs, and populate a shared universe one story at a time. Yeah. I did it. Uh, me too. <laughs> Look at that. There are oh, waveforms. Professionals. Hooray. <laughs> I feel like even though we've had like no, like we've been late on getting this month's series out and we're like behind and we're like, sorry, we have no content. Why do I feel like we've been recording like every day? Because we have so much content, but it's just <laughs> not for November. But it's it's like we have so much content, but none of it's what we need. Oh, no. every, every, yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, well, because we got we got cool things like uh, these Kickstarters uh, going on right yeah. now, right? So we've had this is the third spotlight in the last month. Yeah, no, and doing. then we had like our micro game stuff for the bonus thing. Yep. I know it's just like 
I keep thinking, I'm like, I feel like we've been recording a lot of stuff. Why do we have nothing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's, it's, oh, that's all right. It's fine. Oh, I spent like 15 minutes trying to explain to Nate what a Nokia phone was. And he was like, so like Android? And I was like, no, buddy, like a phone. And he was like, yeah, but like when you when you typed and it had the letters. And I was like, no, buddy, it was a phone. It just had numbers for like doing phone things. <laughs> and he like could not wrap his head around it. No. It's like, bless you, child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's never seen a phone that didn't, that was just for calling, right? Right, yeah. right. Like, what a world. What a what world. A world. <laughs> he didn't know what Oregon Trail was, though, either, so. Oh, see, oh, we've already exposed so my kids to uh, rotary phones, and I know. Uh, they weren't functional, but they understood. Yeah, yeah, because I was trying to explain that's how we used to play Snake. It was just on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> and he like was like, yeah, when it gets to apples. And I was like, apples? It was just a little pixel. I don't know. What, he's like, no, they're apples, mom. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you're so old, lady. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, kids these days. Uh-huh. Definitely. Uh- <laughs> This game actually like spun out of my work with kids, with middle schoolers, uh, and it was really fun. And uh, like I was explaining the game and like the thought process to them and it was like we were having a great time, but they made some reference that I didn't get. And they were like, oh, Jeffrey, do you feel old? Everyone drop an F in the chat for Jeffrey. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're making it worse. Stop it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, I f- no, I feel that way. I have much younger siblings too. My youngest sibling, I think, is just about to turn twenty. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so like I talk to them and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. You're saying all these <laughs> words and I don't I don't understand you. <laughs> like I felt old for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. Like they have way more in common with my with my son than well, they're closer in age to my son than they are to me. So it's like <laughs> you guys go talk about Sonic or Whatever. <laughs> Whatever kids are into. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Yay. All right. I'm uh, going to go ahead and stop my recording.